This lesson is going to walk you through how to write point float form of a linear function based off of how we did explicit formula with arithmetic sequences. So getting our minds back to arithmetic sequences, the first thing I need to look at is how the input values are changing and how the output values are changing. So I see that this is for every one that I go up in x, I'm going up 5 for y. The next thing I need to select is my first input and output values. And then I'm going to create that equation with a sub n being equal to my first output plus my common difference times my n value minus my first input of 1. So this is my explicit formula for an arithmetic sequence. Now what we're going to do is take that form and we're going to actually tweak it and come up with what point slope form is supposed to look like. So my initial values that I used were 1 and 3 and I used a slope of 5. Now slope and common difference mean the exact same thing except slope goes with a linear function and common difference goes with an arithmetic sequence. They are the exact same thing. They tell us for every amount that I go up in x, this is how much I've changed in y. So our slope is 5. This was my form that I had written before. But with point slope form, all of the output values are put together on one side of the equation and the output or the input values in the slope are together on the other side. So the only output value that's not with y right now is this 3. So I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. So my point slope form for our previous example would be y minus 3 equals 5 times x minus 1. Just a minor tweak of what we already know how to do from our arithmetic sequences. So in general, I'm going to have a point. This could be any point in a graph, a table, a problem. So I've been given a point. This represents the x value in the point. This represents the y value in the point. And the slope we're going to use as m. So it will look like y minus my y value equals the slope times x minus my x value. This first y and this first x will always be there. You're just changing y1, m, and x1. And the important thing to note is the input and the output will have the opposite sign when I put them into my form because I'm subtracting those values. So here's our first example. Find the equation in point slope form of a line with a slope of negative 4 that passes through the point 1, negative 3. Well, they were nice. They told us our slope is negative 4, so that's what we're going to use for m. And they told us our point was 1, negative 3, so that's what we're going to use for x1 and y1. Now, when I substitute this in, because I have a negative here for y, I'm going to put that in parentheses when I substitute, just so you can see what happens. So I would have y minus my negative 3 equals my slope of negative 4 times x minus 1. Well, y minus negative 3 is the same thing as saying y plus 3. So this would be my point slope form for this problem. The next one we're going to look at is on a graph. Now I have put some points here on the graph for you just so you can see where those tick marks line up with the actual graph itself. So I need to find the slope. Finding the slope on a graph, I look for the change up and the change over. This is the rise over run. 
So I've gone up five and over one. So five divided by one gives me five. I can use the point two, two, or I could have used the point three, seven if I wanted to. That would have been totally fine as well. So then I'm going to substitute all these values into my formula. So I'll have y minus 2, which was my y value, equals 5, which was my slope, times x minus 2, which was my y value. Last but not least, we're going to look at this problem. Find the equation of the line in point-slope point form that passes through the points negative 2, 1, and 2, 3. Now I think it's most helpful when you're given a problem like this with two points to put your information in a table. Once I do that, I can look at how much my x values are changing because negative 2 up to 2 is 4 units. And then I can look at how my y values are changing and you'll notice I went from smaller x to bigger x. So I'm always going to increase. I'm looking at going up with my x's. So the first thing I'm going to pick is the point 2, 3. I could have used the point 2, negative 1. Would have been totally fine. Now I want to look at the slope. On a graph, we look at the slope as being rise over run. In a table or any other type of information other than a graph, we're looking at how much y has changed over how much x has changed. So y is in the numerator, x is in the denominator. So I'll have 2 divided by 4, which will simplify to 1 half. So substituting in all of my information, gives me y minus my value of 3 equals 1 half, which was my slope, times x minus 2.